Hey, thanks for joining me on another video. My name's Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make videos for non-techies like me. And in this video, I wanted to do sort of a page teardown where there's this page that I recently created for my main domain, well, with my name, my full name, AdamPrizer.com. I'm redoing the whole thing in Beaver Builder and uh, I'm working on this home page here. And I just want to do a quick page teardown where I show you how I did this so that maybe you could get some ideas of um, better using the features and the tools that come with Beaver Builder. So here is the page and I've got this background slideshow going on. So there's this real subtle movement. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Right here, I actually have a pop-up integrated where I can click here and then it will uh, generate a pop-up like this uh, where someone can opt in and get whatever I'm giving. When you scroll down, I have this little stats area and you can see I've got these different uh, bottom of the row textures going on, um, styles, or I think they're just called row styles. And then I kind of have it continuing in on the top here. Then I have a little area here where I'm featuring some testimonials. So I have some testimonials here on the right from people that I may have helped with my videos. And then down here, I've got some testimonials from different product developers where I've helped them maybe uh, educate their customers a little better. Then I have this, when I, you can see I'm using these uh, row separator designs and uh, here we are that feeds us right into my marketing stack and this is where I'm highlighting the three main tools that I use pretty much exclusively and then I've got another bottom of a row texture which is this down arrow and I'm pointing people off here to my different blog posts and then I've got a little contact form here with a background image. So let me actually get into the page builder and just sh first show you how I did some of these things. And then in the second part of this video, I'm going to go ahead and just recreate them. For those that might not uh, be aware of all these little features that you can leverage to have a nice looking site. I really like how the subtle movement is there. So anyways, I'm going to click on page builder and jump on in here. Now some of these rows were pre-designed templates that came from a add-on, a plugin called Ultimate Add-ons for Beaver Builder, and I'll have a link for that down below. So first we've got this background motion. So if I click on the where the row is and I click on row settings, it's going to pull up the settings. And uh, my site's on my development server right now. It's a little on the slow side, so if you see some delays, uh, it's not due to Beaver Builder, it's due to my development server. So here I'm at the row settings, and I've explained many times, a website is only a series of rows, and in those rows they have columns, and these rows on the background, you can have images or colors or videos, and then in these columns you put modules, and that's all a website is. You can break any website on the internet down to that. So uh, I'm in the row setting, and so this whole section here is a row. And now when I scroll down, you can see for the background, I chose a slideshow. A lot of people that have Beaver Builder don't even realize this exists. Um, so I chose slideshow, and then right here, you can choose the background slides and some of the settings. So to get this slow movement, I put two of the same exact photos. I set the speed to 60 seconds, so that's going to make it move really slow. And then I applied this Ken Burns transition, so that's the way the image moves. It's a random uh, movement, but there's all these other different options you have as well. All right, uh, and then the transition speed, randomized photo, background color. So that is the main settings of what I did to get that image in the background and get it moving. And then if you have ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder, you'll have this effects tab. And that's where you can put an effect to the top of the row or the bottom of the row. So I put it to the bottom of the row and I use this thing called the big triangle left. So that's why it has the, it goes down and then it goes up. Uh, so that's called the big triangle to the left and you can change the size. And then there's that little area that, see how it pulls up on each side where you actually need to make a uh, set a color for that. And you usually want it to be the same color as the row directly beneath it. And that's how you get that look. 
Okay, so let me cancel out of that. Now, here's something as well. So I put this big image of myself. I need to take some new pictures, which is fine. Um, but you're going to want, if you use an image of yourself, you're going to want to make sure there's no margin and padding underneath it. So the bottom of the image lines up exactly with the bottom of the row. And so I'll show you how to do that real quick. But a lot of people will put pictures of themselves where they crop out the, the background and it's just them, but then it doesn't line up right. It's just like floating and it doesn't look right. So you see right there, it doesn't look right. But of course, when you actually save it and then look at it, it looks perfect. So let me show you how to get rid of that margin and padding. I'm gonna click on the image properties, go on advanced, and it's right here where I removed the margin on it. And I think I added that five for a particular reason. Anyways, when you save it, it lines up perfectly. Uh, but anyways, that's how I have, that. that's how you can take an image and control how far down to the left, to the right, and to the top it goes by eliminating margins and padding. So let me cancel out of that. This is just a standard box with a button in it. And here are just the number counters. And uh, you can see I'm using that same row effect all over. The reason the colors aren't coming right is because of my development server, which is fine. So let me actually try to start rebuilding some of this. I created a test page right here. And so first I'm going to make a row layout. Now I'm using ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder and one of the benefits of that, it adds about 35 new modules. So there's new things you could do with Beaver Builder, but it also has pre-designed rows and pretty soon pre-designed pay full page templates. So here's the rows, they call it sections and then they're all listed here. So when you click on hero, and it was probably this one right here. So if I drag and drop it across, it's going to put this pre-designed row in there. And uh, it actually, it wasn't this one, but that's okay. I can show you how I would modify it. So I would drag this to here. So now I have it here, and here's where I would put my image. And then I could change my background. So I'm going to change the background by going here to the row settings. And uh, let's see, I'm going to, this actual row is full height. I don't actually want that. So I'm gonna go default and it tightens it up there. I'm gonna go down here to background, choose slideshow. I'm gonna click on create gallery. It's gonna show the images I have here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and choose those two um, images that were identical. I'm gonna add them to the gallery and then click on update gallery, change this to 60, change the transition to a Ken Burns, and one second's fine, and randomized photos is fine. So, and then I did the effect, it was the bottom row, big triangle left, and we can leave that white for now. And so there it is, I just recreated it. So now I just need to put a picture here so if I go to add content, another nice thing about Ultimate Add-ons is it adds this search function. So I can just go type photo and then drag and drop that photo in. And then I'm gonna click on select photo and I've got a photo of me somewhere. It's probably that right there. And then I need to remove the uh, padding there on the bottom. So let me just put zeros throughout. There we go. All right and then I'm gonna click on save. Now I'm way too large there, so I'm gonna to want to um, see what I'm doing. I'm clicking on this right here and it allows me to dynamically resize this column. So I probably want to be a little smaller like that. Now when I save it, this little cutoff here is going to, um, it's just gonna go away. So you, you'll see what I mean when I actually save it. So actually, and it also looks like I might have a background color going on there, an overlay color, let me remove that. So I'm gonna go into the row settings. And then I'm gonna go down just to check. It looks like I have that. Yeah, it's a background overlay. I don't want that. So I'm gonna click this X and then there it is, it goes away. So now uh, you can see how I created that top section there. So now let's create that number section. And this is simple, you could just click on it and start editing whatever you want. 
Um, I made the button transparent. It's all pretty simple, this info box setting. I would also push it down a little here on the top. Here's actually one of my favorite features that Ultimate Add-on adds. It adds the ability to center align a comment, uh, a column. And this is what I mean. So here's an element in this column. I can click right here, click on column settings, and then I'm gonna get this option here to equalize column heights. I'll change that to yes and choose center. And so what that does is, and this is unique to Ultimate Add-ons, it centered it perfectly for me, this column. That right there is actually huge because uh, when I discovered that, I use it all the time. Before, I would have to kind of guesstimate how far I needed to move something down and it wouldn't be exact. And with this one feature, I'm able to just center columns and it's actually one of my favorite features. Okay, so now let me get to the number box below that. I'm going to click on sections again. And that was a number or a counter. Let's see how, oh, here it is, number. And let's see, da, 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 which one was it? Uh, this was it right here. So I'm going to drag and drop that. So these are these pre-designed columns that are, sorry, pre-designed rows that you get out of ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder. Now what I did is I didn't need four, I only needed three. So first I hit X to remove the module in there and then you also have to remove that column. That's how you remove the column, there you go. And now it just spread it out perfectly for me like that. And you can click in any one of these like this and change the icon to whatever you want. Ultimate add-ons also adds four different icon packs. So here's one here. I actually really like these top four rows a lot, but you can see there's a lot more add-ons that you, I'm sorry, a lot more icons that are here. Here's a cute little rocket. Click on save. And so that's all I did to uh, start um, to, to do this row. But then I also added that same uh, effect to the bottom of it, that same row effect. So let me do that real quick. I'm gonna go into the row settings and I'm gonna to go to effects and this time it's not the top, it's the bottom. So I'm gonna do a big triangle right. So here's the left and then I switch it over to the right. I'm gonna to have to come back in and fix these colors. I'm gonna to have to make the color right here match this color. And uh, actually let's do that now. So if I went back to my row style Here's the background color. I can click here and let's just copy the color code into my clipboard. And now I'm gonna click on save. So I need to set it actually in this row. So let me go back in there and then go back to effects. And then right here, I need to set it to the color code that's in my clipboard and click on save. And then we should see it uh, now the colors match. See how that matches now? And so uh, next I did that really cool uh, row where there's uh, half of it's one color, the other half's another color, and you can put whatever you want. And that was another pre-designed section. And let's see, that I think that might have been a content section. So I'm gonna scroll down these pretty fast. Okay, so it's something similar to these, but that's not the one I used. Let's see if I find it. There's so many, up here it is, right here. So I'm gonna drag and drop this down here. Okay, and it's gonna pop up. And what I did is um, I made two of them. So this is how one was, and then I duplicated it, and then I just swapped the colors. So let me show you how to do that, and then I swapped the content across. So now I need to deal with this little gap problem right here. You see that, the color? And I actually might have just misled you. I think what I did is I applied the top row effect here, and I didn't apply an effect here. So let me, let me check that real quick. So let me remove this bottom effect that I just told you to add. That's okay, I'm doing this all off the cuff. So I'm gonna go to effects and I'm gonna eliminate that, just like that, and I'm gonna save. And then I'm gonna apply it to the top of here to get that effect that I had. So I'm, now I'm gonna edit this row, just like this. 
and I'm gonna go to effects and this I'm gonna do on the top I'm gonna be doing a big triangle right and the background color I think I had to make that same color like that and let's see if that does it okay so that's exactly how I did that you see that um, how I made it go like this and then I think I made this white right now I think it's that same kind of a gray so let me change the color of this column now I know when I was first using Beaver Builder, I missed these column settings and you don't want to miss them. So when you hover right here, you see this is a column and this is a column. But if you click here like that, it gives you this option of column settings. So you don't want to miss that. And this is how you could put a picture just in this column uh, or change the color just in the column. So right here, I think I made it white just like that. So that's how you see it kind of stands out. All right, and I did the same thing here, but I flipped the color. So I will make this white and then this black. So I'm gonna go here like I just showed you, column settings, and then I'm going to go down here and for background, I'm gonna click here and make it black just like that. Now when you have a black background or a dark background, Beaver Builder makes it really easy to change the text color. So I can also change the text color right here and make that white. And that's how easy that is. And then I need to do the same thing here. I need to make this white. Uh, so I've got to go here, go to column settings, just like that. And uh, so the color, I need to remove the text color because it's gonna be white, so the text needs to be black. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And now the text went to its default color. And then the background, I'm going to get rid of that as well. And so that's how I got that effect right there. Now I think what I did is I added that row effect to the bottom down here. So let me do that. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. And then I just moved this to here like that. So I went like this, I moved it here, and then I did this, and I moved it there. So you have that reversal flipping effect. Okay, so now I need to put the effect on the row bottom here. So I'm gonna click on row settings, and I'm gonna go to effects. I'm gonna do a big triangle right this time. So I'm alternating left, right. And then the background color, I'm gonna put that same color in right there, and I'm gonna click on save. Oops, I think I already screwed it up. I put that on the top when I wanted to put it on the bottom. Yes, I screwed that up. Let's fix that. So I'm going in here, I'm going to effects, and I do that sometimes. So let's make that none, and let's put it down here. Triangle left, and let's put that color back in like that, oh, there it is, you can already see it. And then save. Okay, so there it is. So there we've got that effect going on, right there and right there. So now I added another pre-designed section that you get from Ultimate Add-ons to get those four, um, actually here, let me try to find it, to get those four boxes. Let's see, it's gotta be in here. I don't remember the name of it. It might have been something like that. Up oh, here it is, right there. So I'm gonna drag and drop that now, right there. And it's gonna pop that in. And what I did is I removed the first box like, like this, and then I just added uh, some text there. And then here in, in these, I just clicked on them and I changed the icon to be one that I liked. I changed my heading, I changed the info, and then I clicked on link in order to add a button. So you can just add a button like that. And let's see, it should just add a button right there. And I believe I made it transparent right here. And then I think I also made it full width. So there should be an option here for the width. And then I made that full width. And then, uh, so I, I perfected one, and then I just copied it and pasted it across, just like that. 
All right, so there it is. So then what I did is I deleted this one, I deleted this one, and then I duplicated across. This is, this is how I try to do things faster. I'll modify one, the colors get everything perfect, and then I'll just use this duplicate button and then edit the text for them. This might be the lazy way of doing it, who knows. All right, just like that. So that's how I do things a little quicker. And then I added uh, the row texture on the row beneath this to get that down arrow. And that was simply just the, the blog grid. So if you go to uh, add content right here, let's see, I think if I type blog, it was just blog posts, something like that. I, I just added that down there. So I'm not gonna go through that. And lastly, I added a uh, row with a contact form. And that's gonna be sections and then, I think it's contact info. So here's all these different pre-designed rows to highlight your contact information. This one's actually pretty nice right here and it would be very fitting. But I used this one right here. So let me drag that down to the bottom just like this. Now, I'm not a fan of that bright yellow, so what I did is I changed it to an image. So you would just go here here and click on row settings and change the background from color to photo. Select your photo, and I just chose this one right here. And then it's a little, you notice how it's a little hard to see your form. So what I did then to make it easy to see, I added this background overlay like that. Let's see. Okay. And then I made the opacity a higher number, probably something like 80 or something like that. So you can subtly see it. I probably actually won't keep that. I'm not like loving it. So let's see. And then I click save. Yeah, so I'm not really loving loving that background image. I'll figure out something to do with that. But anyways, this is essentially, you saw in the last 10 minutes, exactly how I built this page. And so all you'd have to do is click on done, and you just saw how I built the home page for this site of mine. I hope that me showing you how I did this Actually, I don't care if you copy exactly what I did if you really liked it that much, but the purpose of it for me is to just show you how you can use real world experience to do these things and it might kind of give you some ideas of what you can do to make your site a little better or your clients sites a little better I by no means am a website designer so for you designers watching this website uh, give me a break because I'm not a website designer and that's why I like to rely on tools like Beaver Builder and Ultimate Add-ons to kind of do the designing for me I just change an image here, change some text there, and I'm done. And so that's kind of the way I like to build websites now. So anyways, uh, I've got links to all of this down below. Hey, really quick, can you do something for me? If you're watching this on YouTube, can you give me a thumbs up? And I wanna invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. There's a button right beneath me, and I'd really appreciate it if you did that. And I've got something for you. I don't want you to leave empty-handed. If you just click off here to the side, it's a free video course that I put together just for you called the Three Steps to WordPress Success. You will love this course. Registration is free right now. All you have to do is click on the link right next to me. Hey, thanks for spending this time with me, and I can't wait to make another video for you.